A little while back, I bought the Sony A6000. It is a 10 year old camera and it works just fine. It's great, 16 megapixels. It's an APS-C sensor. I have a little bitty pancake lens on it, but it uses the E-mount lens system so I can take it off. But with this size, with this little tiny pancake lens, which is a Sony 20 millimeter F2.8 something something lens, fits right in my pocket, it's great. It's very pocketable, very usable camera. It's great, it makes good shots. And then I got thinking, well, what I really want though, is I want the Fujifilm X100 6. And I mean, I guess probably I would also want a Leica, be, a Leica because who wouldn't? Because they're like 10,000 bucks. And if the Sony is like the uh, Honda Accord, the Fuji's kind of maybe like uh, Audi, and the Leica is probably like a uh, Porsche or BMW maybe. Because, you know. So I, I feel like you're good with any of these. The Fujifilm X100X is vastly different. It's, it's 40 something megapixels compared to 16 something megapixels. And guess what I found from this? I don't barely notice the difference. That's the thing I don't notice. So I was like, well, why though? Why, why, why am I interested in using this Fujifilm camera more? What, what is the X106 doing that the other one isn't for me? What do I want or need or desire from a camera? So I think it comes down to something I hadn't really thought much about, the buttons and the control. On the A6000, I can shoot in manual. A lot of times I shoot in aperture priority, but that's partly because I don't have super easy access to the buttons. On the X100, I have a front control for my ISO with my finger. I have a back control for shutter speed with my finger. I can use the ring to do aperture. It's all right there. It's all easy. And I like the fact I can get to it. Now, when I say it's all there, I can do it manually. And, I, and I'm thinking that's one of the reasons why you pick this over something else. It's not a trend thing. I, I'm not even on TikTok. I mean, look at my everything. But it is definitely that I like the way that I can control it. I have a bunch of point and shoot cameras. What didn't I like about them? The fact that I couldn't control, well, I mean, you can run it in autopilot, right? When you run it in manual, they suddenly break down fast because again, they don't just have easy access to the changes. Everything has sort of video gamed itself down to be a lot more like our phones, right? I think one of the things I've discovered over the last several weeks is I'm sort of chasing the control, chasing the buttons. And I'm thinking, maybe that's it. But what's really funny when I say this, right, is that in some use cases, that's what I want. In other use cases, it's the opposite of what I want. I'm talking to you on an Insta360 Go 3S. One button. And that's what I like about it. It's, is it worth the money that you have to pay right now to get one of these? I don't think so. Unless it is for you. Is it, you know, is the camera you have probably good enough? For sure. Technically, for sure. As like as like making a good picture, anything in the last 10 years is pretty good. Not cell phone cameras, standalone handheld hold them yourself cameras. Um, and I would I just want to end on saying it really comes down to what do you want to get done and what are you chasing? So what I found is when I'm outdoors with the X106, one of the things I'm doing, I'm fidgeting, I'm twisting, I'm getting the knobs right, I'm trying to make sure my exposure's just right. And that's the part I'm liking. It's, it's, it's like fly fishing. You can do a bobber fishing, where you just throw a line with a worm and a hook in the water and you wait around for a fish to bite it. Or you can do fly fishing, where those guys like go whoosh, 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 whoosh. You can do either one. But people like to go fly fishing because they can play with the fidget, with the mess with the controls, right? That's what I've come to learn. That's the only difference I can tell you about.